Vicks, makers of Vicks Vapor Rub, presents Dangerously Yours, starring Victor Jory in The Shadow of the Raven. Here is a good thing for you to remember when you catch a cold. The best known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds is Vicks Vapor Rub. And now, Dangerously Yours. I am adventure. In my name, men have traversed the highways, the byways, the skyways of the world. I am the fire that burns in the heart of youth, that makes men dream and dare and conquer. I am dangerously yours. Danger is an elusive term. Daniel Mellon in the lion's den. Sir Francis Drake on the seven seas. Edgar Allan Poe met it in the dark, wandering recesses of his mind. Come with me to the brooding adventure that was the life of Edgar Allan Poe in the story called The Shadow of the Raven. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a curious volume of an old forgotten lore... While I pondered. While I pondered. No, no, that's not it. Edgar, it's almost midnight. You must get some rest. Mother and I like to see our boarders healthy. Hello, Virginia. It's long past time for little girls to be in bed. I heard you singing one of Grieg's songs that has always been a favorite of mine. Yes, it's one of my favorites, too. Do you know the words? Oh, love of mine to all eternity. Yes, I know the words very well. What are you writing? Nothing, just an idea. But it isn't working out. I've been wanting to do a piece for a long time about a raven. Good heavens, what are you two doing up? Now go on to bed, Virginia. <laughs> yes, Mother. Good night. Mrs. Clem, there's, there's something I must tell you. I, I didn't sell my story today, and I don't have any money to pay my board. Oh, well, never mind, Edgar. Your stories will be recognized someday, and don't worry about the rent. Well, there's something else I, I want to tell you. Yes, I know. You've fallen in love with my daughter, haven't you, Edgar? You're a very wise woman. Uh, mothers have an instinct about such matters. And you see, I know so well how she feels. I want so much to marry her, and yet I'm afraid to marry her. Mrs. Clem, have I any right to her? My life is such a confused, unhappy thing. Have I any right to marry someone so sweet, so young, so holy? I think I haven't. If I'm honest, I must say, all I can offer her is a nightmare. No, Edgar, No. You mustn't say that. Oh, Virginia, you were listening. Yes, Mother, I was listening, and I'm glad. Would you let me speak to Edgar alone for a moment, please? Of course. Good night, Edgar. Now, don't sit up too late. Oh, Edgar, I love you so much. Virginia, listen to me. The best I can offer you isn't big enough or good enough or pure enough. The best I can offer you is my love and my devotion. That's the whole world. And if you accept my love and devotion, you accept also hours darker than any you've ever experienced. The hours of my despair and torment. The hours when demons descend on me and take hold of me and I want to die. Or get drunk. Doesn't that frighten you? Doesn't that make you pause, Virginia? Do you love me, Edgar? I love you and I need you. If I'm ever to know peace... But when I want to reach out for you, something inside me says, no. Something says, don't touch her. There's evil in your touch. What's clean and holy will shrivel and die if you attempt to possess it. Virginia, do you understand at all what I'm saying? Do you? Yes, dear. You're saying you love me. And I'm glad. I'm so very, very glad. Oh, run away, Virginia. I'm not strong enough to send you. Run, run, run fast until you're in the sunlight and free of me. Run, Virginia. Darling, hold me close. Hold me close, my darling. Virginia. Oh, my Virginia. <laughs> get some sleep. I can't sleep. Virginia, I cannot marry you. I just cannot marry you. There's, there's a demon in my mind, Virginia. When, when I conquer him, he writes my stories. But when he conquers me, he makes me a whining coward. And I can't bring all that into your life. My dear, if there's to be happiness for me, if there's to be light in the sunshine and happiness in the stars, I must be with you. Oh, Edgar, 
I'd rather have one glorious hour than a thousand empty ones. There's danger in this marriage, Virginia. I feel it. I know it. If that's true, then let there be danger. Because it will be a beautiful danger. Edgar, we must go on. We must take what comes. If we turn back, we, we return to nothing. I love you very much. And I love you. And will forever. <laughs> Mrs. Poe, did I ever tell you that I love you very much? Well, you haven't for a long time. A half an hour at least. <laughs> Virginia, suddenly you've made me very ambitious to write. I want to conquer the world and throw it at your feet. Ask me for something, something you've always, always wanted. Well, let's see. I think I'd like a house. A small house with a, with a friendly fireplace and lots of windows. I ask you for that. And I shall ask God for a long life to live in that house with you. This is a very special occasion, darling. How about a toast? Good, I'll pour the sherry. What shall we drink to? Drink to, why, to the future. Our future. Oh. Oh, close that thunder was. Well, let us drink our toast, Edgar. To our future. To our shining future. Encouraging, writing, 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 and having nothing come of it. Getting jobs and losing them because of politics and petty jealousies. Things will be better, Edgar. But, Virginia, you look ill, I'm afraid. No, I should never have brought you to New York. But I love it here. And nothing great was ever accomplished without a struggle. Why don't you go on with your story, Edgar? It's such an exciting idea. And I love the title. The Pip and the Pendulum. <laughs> Virginia, where are you? Uh, I'm here, darling. The room's so dark. It's full of eyes staring at me. It's so dark, Virginia. Well, there's nothing in the room, Edgar. You were just having a bad dream. Oh, Virginia, my darling, don't ever leave me. Promise you'll never leave me. I promise, Edgar. How can I ever keep you? How could I ever keep an angel? <laughs> I don't know whether you could keep an angel or not. But I'm sure no woman could ever leave you. Why, Edgar... You're the prince that every woman dreams about. If I'm a prince, it's the prince of darkness. Hmm, that may be. The dark may be your kingdom. You write about it so well. But if it is, then... Then you must learn to ride through it, unafraid. I wish I could. Dear God, I wish I could. <laughs> I am deeply embarrassed by the necessity of having to write you this request. But I have been anticipating a sale of some stories that has not yet materialized. I wonder if you would be so kind as to lend me the sum of twenty dollars. Heartbreaking to watch him struggle so desperately for a foothold. I never quite get it. You're worrying too much about Edgar. He's coming along, dear. He did win a prize with his gold bug story. A prize isn't enough. Oh, I'm frightened for him, Mother. I'm afraid he'll break his heart. Not over stories. The only thing that will ever break his heart is losing you. Don't say that. Please don't say that, Mother. <laughs> Well, Doctor? It's hard to know what to say to you, Mrs. Poe. I, I wish you'd let me talk to your husband. Uh, how old are you, Mrs. Poe? Twenty-three. Am I very ill, Doctor? Do you want the truth, my child? Yes, I... I want the truth. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't help you. Medical science is still very limited in cases like yours. I see 
How, how long have I? I can't even ask that. I'm sorry. More sorry than I can say. I'll have my carriage take you home. Oh, no, please. Please, I, I can walk home. No, no, no. It's raining hard. I don't want you out on the streets <laughs> in this weather. And remember, you can send a boy at any hour of the day or night if you need him. Thank you, Doctor. But I shall probably fool you, you know. I intend to live for a long time yet. God bless you. I hope you do. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Two of The Shadow of the Raven. You know... This is the time of year when the children start coming home with colds that make them feel so miserable. Now, to relieve their distress, the best-known home remedy you can use is Vicks VapoRub. You just rub it on the child's throat, chest, and back at bedtime. And right away, it starts in to help relieve the congestion and irritation in the upper breathing passages, the coughing spasms, sore throat, and that muscular soreness or tightness. Results are so good because VapoRub penetrates, penetrates into the upper bronchial tubes with its special soothing medicinal vapors. And at the same time, it stimulates, stimulates chest and back surfaces like, like a comforting, warming poultice. This penetrating, stimulating action of VapoRub keeps on working for hours. It invites restful sleep, and often by morning... Most of the misery of the cold is gone. But be sure you use VapoRub because only VapoRub gives you this special penetrating, stimulating action to relieve distress of colds. Vicks VapoRub. And now, Act Two of Dangerously Yours, starring Victor Jory in The Shadow of the Raven. Virginia! Virginia, where are you? I'm here, dear. Is anything wrong? No, except that even the next room was so far away I couldn't bear it. Aren't you reading very late tonight? I... I'm not sleepy. I... I slept pretty late this morning, you know. You have a strange radiance tonight. You're almost too beautiful. What a nice compliment. Come sit beside me. Let me put my arm around you, darling. What was the matter, dear? Why did you call for me? Because I fell asleep for a moment and I needed you. You see, every time I shut my eyes lately, I feel as though I was sinking into a pit and that you are being drawn away from me somewhere out into space. But I'm not, Edgar. No, it's only my horrible dream. I had one last night. I got up and lit the lamp and sat there watching you sleep. And then I was at peace. You seem to me an angel, holy, pure, and remote from all earthly things. And during those hours, I was free from the thing that haunts me. And it was there I came to know exactly what it is you are to me. And what is that, Edgar? You're all the good that's in me. You're my religion, and my faith, and my honor. You're the light that can dispel the blackest night. You're the coolness that can heal my most burning fears. And you're the clear, logical reason for my continuing to live a life that has no beauty. But for you... Oh, Virginia. Sometimes I think that if I lost you, I'd... I'd go mad. No, Edgar, no. Please. Please don't say such things. I'm sorry, darling. Very sorry. and Very tired. Won't you please sing for me? Oh, my dear. I don't think I can. Please, Virginia. No.
Virginia. Virginia. Oh, Virginia, my darling. My darling. <laughs> She must have a complete rest and quiet, Mr. Poe. You must be very careful not to excite her or upset her in any way. Good night. I'll stop by in the morning. Good night, Doctor. I'll show you out, Doctor. Thank you, Mrs. Patton. Good night, Doctor. Edgar, now I want you to lie down and try to get some sleep. I'll sit with Virginia for a while. I can't stay in this house. I've got to get out of this house. Do you think I can sit here while she's dying in the next room? Don't you understand that I'm dying too? Do you think I can stay here and watch the only thing in this world that I love slipping away from me? I've got to get out of here. I'll go mad if I stay here. What good do you think running away would do? Do you think you can drink yourself into forgetting? Yes, eventually. Listen, she's calling you. Oh, my. All right, darling. I'm coming. Oh, my poor dear. I'm sorry I frightened you. Sit down beside me. You look so tired, my darling. Lie down here and take a nap with me. <laughs> we'll both feel much better in the morning. I promise you. Is she any better? No. The doctor just left. He says there's no change. I'm going in to sit with her for a while. Oh, let me sit with her. You're tired and ill. No. I have to count. The hours now. I can't waste even one. Hello, Edgar. Look, the sun is out. Isn't it nice to see the sun in January? Yes. <laughs> and in two more months it will be spring. And then you shall go out in the sunshine, my dear. And I'll fill your arms with flowers. You'll go strong again. Remember how we used to walk through the fields when I was a child, hand in hand? And you would tell me stories. And in all of them, I was always the fairy tale princess, waiting for my knight to come riding. Do you remember, Edgar? Yes, I remember. <laughs> And when the night came, he had your eye and your smile. And I, I thought how wonderful it would be if such a man would fall in love with me. Oh, Virginia, I wanted to give you so much. And I have given you so little. So little? Oh, you, you've given me 12 years of happiness. Far beyond what most people know. You've given me the days of those years in their fullest beauty. Why, my dear, you've given me the entire world as a kingdom. You've made me very happy. It's been exciting and beautiful every moment of it. It's been poverty and pain and fear and death. Don't you think I know that? Oh, Virginia, my darling, you must live. You've, you've got to live. You, you promised you'd live, you know. No, Edgar. I promised I would never leave you. My dear friend, I am writing to advise you that my wife, Virginia, died on January 30th. Edgar, 
Edgar, you must rest. No, 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 please. I must finish this poem. I must finish it. Very well. Very well. Eagerly, I wish them off. Vainly, I have sought to borrow from my books. Sir, cease from sorrow. Sorrow for the lost Lenore. For the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore. Nameless here. Forevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting. Still is sitting, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and his soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted. Evermore. Oh, Virginia. Virginia. Edgar. Edgar, where are you going? Edgar, come back. Say, Doctor, we found this man unconscious over on East Lombard Street. He seems to be in a bad way. Yes, he's in a very grave condition. You did right to bring him to the hospital. Who is he? I don't know. Never saw him before. Well, let's see if he has anything that will identify him. Hmm. He has some letters in his pocket. Let me see. Hmm. They're all addressed to Edgar Allan Poe. Is he resting any easier? No, Doctor. He's still delirious. He's been shouting and sobbing terribly. You'd better look at him right away. Virginia? Virginia? Where are you, Virginia? You said you wouldn't leave me, but it's been two years since, since you left, and I've been alone for two years. Two years of nightmares. 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 Writing. 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 The sound increased, and what could I do? It was a low, dull, quick sound like a sound a watch makes when enveloped in cotton. What could I do? It grew louder. 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 I felt that I must scream or die. And now again. Louder. Louder. The Telltale Heart. Yes, of course, the Telltale Heart. I was reading that last night. Stupid of me. Edgar Allan Poe. He wrote it. Virginia. Virginia. Get him away. Get him away. His eyes have all the seeming. His eyes have all the seeming of demon that is dreaming. All the seeming, seeming, seeming. Virginia! Virginia, help me. Virginia, I need you. I'm lost. Virginia, they're pulling me down into darkness. I'm lost. I'm lost, Virginia. Ah, oh, Virginia. I've been so lonely. You won't be lonely again, Edgar. And there won't be any more nightmares. Give me your hand, my darling. Poor fellow. Poor fellow. Do you know that poem he was saying over and over? His eyes have all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming. And my soul from out that shadow that lies streaming on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. But it did lift. Look at his face, Doctor. He looks peaceful, doesn't he? Very peaceful. Put down in your book 
Edgar Allan Poe died just before dawn on Sunday, October 7th. If you've caught a cold that's making you feel miserable, here's a modern way to relieve distress and get a lot of comfort. Just rub Vicks Vapor Rub on your throat, chest, and back. You'll find that almost at once, Vapor Rub starts to soothe the distress of the cold in the very places it bothers you most. Vapor Rub penetrates, penetrates into the cold, congested upper bronchial tubes with its special soothing medicinal vapors. And at the same time, it stimulates, stimulates chest and back surfaces like a comforting, warming poultice. This penetrating, stimulating action of vapor rub keeps on working for hours to bring grand relief. It invites restful sleep, and often, most of the misery of a cold is gone overnight. Why don't you try it tonight? And remember, only vapor rub gives you this special penetrating, stimulating action. It's the best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds. Vicks Vaporub. I am Adventure. Next week, come with me on a new journey into the world of romance and excitement. Meet with me a man who dared everything for one great moment. Until then, I am dangerously yours. The script was written by Gene Holloway and directed by Richard Sandville. Music for the series is under the direction of Mark Warno. The part of Virginia was played by Janice Gilbert. Be sure and listen again next week when Vix presents Dangerously Yours, starring Victor Jory. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>